Welcome to the Discipleship Cruise. God bless you. As you gather yourselves and your neighbors and your family members around your television sets, let us pray to God together. Father, we thank you for another opportunity and privilege to come onto your throne of grace, to obtain mercy and to find grace. Thank you for being our God in times like this. We have come, we are waiting. The Lord you will send us the dew from heaven, that your word will come unto us as a dew. It will, will, will nourish our lives, it will refresh us. It will give us instructions so that we will know what we should do at a time like this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank God for His mercies over our lives. And I want to congratulate you for being alive. It is because of God's mercy that you are alive. Many have gone. Many are gasping for breath. Many are in a very terrible shape. But God has seen you through. God has brought you across this storm. And as COVID is being relaxed, lockdown is being relaxed everywhere. And we are beginning to go back to our normal way of life. My prayer for you is that you will not go back to a routine life. That the gains of COVID will be properly established in your life. COVID was meant for us to inculcate a new lifestyle. COVID was meant for us to spend more time with our families. COVID lockdown was meant for us to, to trust God more than ever before. COVID looked negative, but for many of us, it has become positive. Let's keep praying. There's a reason why God allowed COVID. I've seen mass graves. I've seen plenty of people die. But God has spared you. You cannot afford to live a normal life again. You must dedicate your life to God and serve Him with the rest of your life. And let me say to you, something imminent is about to happen. Don't take it for granted. We're expecting the move of God. We're expecting the second advent of Jesus Christ. We're expecting something to happen from heaven. And all of us should live expectantly, looking for that blessed hope. So get yourself ready. In the course of this lockdown, as we entered into this plague and turmoil and darkness that engulfed the world, they call it a pandemic, not just an epidemic, a pandemic worldwide. Almost every country was affected. Uh, the Western nations bore the brunt of it. New York became the epicenter of the whole world. Um, instead from China, it has spread. We chose and decided that we should talk about some things that are relevant to the present time. So we began to speak of in times like this. In case you're not even following us in this short series, we are discussing our discussion is on in times like this. And our case study is a man they call Noah. Why did we go and jump on Noah? Was it arbitrary? No. It was because Jesus Christ said that before he comes back again, it shall be like the days of Noah, the days before the flood. Even though the earth will never be destroyed with flood again, the character of the days that in which we live and which will be after the, after the COVID, which will precede the second coming of Christ, uh, is going to take the character of the days of Noah. And we checked it in Genesis, and we saw that they were terrible days in which God himself regretted that he had made man on the earth. There were terrible days of violence, of immorality of a high degree. Terrible days of impunity. And God looked down from the earth and saw that the imagination of the people's heart was only evil. Scheming evil all the time. The, the bent and the, and, the, and the inclination of everybody was evil. And God said, no, I will not, I will, I'm not happy again. I will destroy this earth. I will start afresh. But... God found one man, 
he found favor in the eyes of God. And that was why we chose to study. Why did he know and make it? What did he do that others did not do? And we began to look at that man. And we found first and foremost that the man found favor in God's eyes because he chose to walk with God. And his life became blameless, righteous, mature. And God looked upon him and said, no, no, no. This man alone, I will spare you. So Noah built his relationship with God. And Noah obeyed the word of God. And Noah lived in God's presence. And God said, yes, this man has given me hope. He has given me joy. Then we saw Noah built his house. But we say he built an ark to the saving of his house. So Noah was a builder. He built his life. He built the ark. Wherein he saved his family was saved, his wife, his children, his daughters-in-law. All of them were saved. And that's what gives God a hope of a new beginning. And we kept emphasizing that if you build yourself alone and you don't build your family, it's good, but it's not very good. Because there's no other generation after you. And we kept investigating. Last time we came, we saw that Noah lived by faith. And if anybody is going to survive at a time like this, there is no other principle by which he must live except the principle of faith in God, not positive thinking. That everybody that is going to survive at a time like this, things are going to become scarce, things are going to become difficult, many are going to lose their jobs, businesses are going to be slow to pick up, the dollar exchange rate with every naira is going to become terrible. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm only telling you what the economists are saying, that the economies will shrink. Already we are seeing signs of it. Transport costs will go up. The prices of food will go up. There's going to be massive, massive, massive inflation. And things are going to be harder. There are going to be more criminals than before. But too many young men will be thrown out of job. In this kind of scenario, you cannot live without trusting God. So it was by faith Noah lived. And faith helps us to contact what is not seen. Faith helps us to touch the unseen. But because my time is always very short, and because I must maximize it, I'd like to take one more aspect of this man's life, uh, and um, we'll begin to turn around. You see, as COVID is beginning to loosen, and many nations are beginning to say, no, no, we cannot lock down people forever, which is true. Many parents are saying, I'm getting tired of my children. Let them go back to school. And that's not a very wonderful testimony, but I knew it would come to that. There's no more food in the house. The children are just disturbing. They just go out whenever they like and come back. They're unruly. That is your product. And you better take note that that is what you have produced and beg God to show you mercy. COVID has a lot of lessons we have learned. And I have tell, told you before that you must maximize COVID. What you couldn't do before COVID, two months of lockdown has given us an opportunity to pray and to do the best we can. If you didn't do, then I don't know whether you are ready for the coming days. Because if you cannot save yourself and save your household by building the ark of testimony, the ark of, of salvation, I wouldn't know whether you'd be happy to see your children in hell and you in heaven. It's going to be very, very traumatic. So let me go ahead to read for you from the second epistle of Peter. Peter's second general epistle. It is called the general epistle of Peter. Uh, second Peter chapter 2. The Bible says, but they are aware, from verse 1, they are aware false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately, who privately, shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom they 
word of truth shall be evil spoken of. But through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now is of a long time lingereth lingered not, and their damnation slumbered not. And the Bible says, For if God spared not the, the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into, uh, into chains of darkness, to be res reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Lot, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the fault upon the world of the unrighteous or the godly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, and condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after shall live godly, and deliver just Lord, vexed with the field, the conversation of the wicked, and so on, and so on, and so on. So what I'm learning from here is that our father, our 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 father Noah, uh, the the one of the patriarchs, uh, that he was a preacher of righteousness, and that's what I want to speak to you very quickly about: a preacher of righteousness. Now, when a man builds his life, builds his family, builds his testimony, he will be a, he will be a minister of God. He will be a servant of God. It's automatic. Many people think that when you are a holy man, you don't serve God. No. Every man that has built up his life automatically, automatically, will minister, will serve God. When God builds your inside, there's going to be an expression. People will know your testimony. People will, people, people will be touched by your life. So ministry is automatic. But we don't jump on it first because that will become a problem. We come from the inside to the outside. We come from your life, your family, to the ministry. In fact, the Bible says, whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your heart. So if you don't do anything as pertaining service to the Lord, and you really, really are a holy man, building up your life, it will be a contradiction. There is an expression. So Noah, and that last testimony concerning Noah, we know he built the ark. We know he was building his family. We know he was building his, uh, his uh, altars. But thank God for this revelation here that he preached righteousness. That's what he did. For 120 years, he was preaching every day. 120 years was calling on his generation that something is going to happen soon. Repent. Turn away from your sins and your iniquities. Turn to the Lord. 120 years a very unpopular preacher. Nobody believed him. As he was building the ark, people mocked, people laughed, people made jest of him. And let me warn you in time, if you want to preach righteousness, the world will not like you. And so this morning, I want to end up by saying to you, not end, not end the series, because I want to say, show you a few more things as we await the next event of history. I'm expecting a move of God. I'm expecting you to be part of the vanguard of them. I'm expecting you to be a catalyst for revival. I'm expecting you to touch many, many, many lives after COVID, even during COVID and after COVID. I'm expecting you students, you, you, you government workers, you businessmen, as you return to your duty post, as you return to your fields of endeavors, that you will not be fruitless. You will not be a man that didn't bear any fruit. That you will not be part of God's problem like everybody in the newest days, that you will not give God problem, you will not bring him a bad order, that God will say, but I found a man in that campus. I found a man in that ministry of health. I found a man in that, a woman in that bank that gives me a sweet aroma. Because their life, their words, their hands are bringing me a sweet savor. They are touching life. They are blessing people. I want to hear that testimony. That's part of the training God is giving us in this COVID. That's part of why you have gone back inside so that you go out. You don't, you don't, you don't stay out all the time and do good. You have to be coming from inside, from His presence, and when you go out, God will back you up. Now, few things to say. Only a righteous man 
preaches righteousness. An unrighteous man cannot preach righteousness. And righteousness, I will begin to speak to, I will speak to you about righteousness. It's a very important quantity, if I will say it like that, in this kind of generation. The Bible says concerning that day, and I mean concerning Noah, Peter said, but there we are false prophets. Maybe I should read this thing for you in a very simple version so that we will be able to, to go through it very quickly. The King James Bible for me is still the best Bible. But sometimes, because we are preaching to a modern generation of people who didn't go to school very well, I'm not insulting you, I'm just trying to tell you the simple truth. That even when I preach to Englishmen, I discover that they don't even understand English again. So let me come to the normal, normal, uh, the kind of language everybody understands. But if you wanted to know the language in which God spoke, and you want to mark the word of the Bible very well, I think the nearest to the word of the Spirit is the King James Bible. Uh, but let me read from the New Living Translation. But there were also false prophets in Israel, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will, they will cleverly teach destructive heresies and even deny the, the master who bought them. In this way, they will bring sudden destruction of themselves. I don't want to deal with this. I'm just trying to come to verse 5, which is, Noah was a preacher. That even in the days of Noah, even before the days of Noah, there are always going to be preachers, false prophets. And nowadays, there is going to be a preponderance of false teachers. Their message will not be sound. They will not bring the truth. They will bring a lot of motivational speakings. They will bring a lot of fancy words. But that will not help the life of the people. They will bring, this, they will bring destructive heresies. They will not speak against God. Some doctrines that you hear nowadays are not founded upon the word of God. And because many men have developed itching ears, you see, the crowds are excited but their lives. Whatever you hear that does not change your life, does not transform you, is only an information. It doesn't help you. Now, many will follow their evil ways and shameful immorality. So many are going to follow their, their teachings and their shameful immorality. And because of these teachers, the word of truth will be slandered. The 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 of the of the of the of of Jesus will become will become seen in a very bad light. Now that's the problem we have in our generation. Eh? And I have shown you their mark, their evil teaching and their shameful immorality. They are people of sense of, of sensuality, of the senses. They live from their senses, not from the Holy Spirit. They are sensual. You will see a lot of immorality among those preachers and kind of teachers and every, everybody around them. Immorality will thrive. And I see it in the news media. I see it everywhere. One of God has slept with somebody. This one has done that. It's not strange. When a man is not upright and righteous, he will be unrighteous. And I'm, God, I'm not going to be afraid to hear more of that kind of news. Because it was there in the days of Noah, it will be there today. What is important is that it is the preachers and the teachers that lead the whole multitude of people astray. They are the ones that should have sanctified the people by the word of God. Hallelujah. And they have a lot of followers. A lot of followers. In their greed, they are covetous men. Greedy men for money. Greedy, they love money. They will make up clever lies to get hold of your money. But God condemned them long ago and their destruction will not be delayed. And we need to say what the Bible says. No matter how I love you, I want to say to you, man of God, woman of God, uh, elders of the, of the word of God, fathers and mothers, that judgment will come. There's no way to say it. There's going to be a consequence for whatever you do. For God did not spare even the angels who sinned in the beginning, he threw them into hell, in gloomy paths of darkness, where they are being held until the day of judgment. God did not spare the ancient world except for Noah and the seven others in his family. Noah warned the world of God's righteous judgment. 
So anytime you are preaching and you don't tell the people that God will going to judge them for their consequences, that God is a God of judgment. You see, God has two sides. God is very merciful and very gracious and wonderful. But God is also severe. If God does not judge evil, then God is not a righteous God. And we need to make it play in our hearts. Don't preach God as if God is one-sided. No, no. There's another side of A coin has two sides. God is pleasant. God is good, winsome. God is very merciful. And I have, I have known his mercy. God is a God that wants people to be happy and joyful every day. God is a God of grace. If you find his favor, you will live, you will live in, in bliss. But yet, God is a God of judgment. God sits on the throne of mercy, but there's other thrones. The day of the seat, or when he will sit on the throne of judgment is coming. Even today, if you, if you contravene government regulations, you'll be arrested by government. And you'll be jailed according to the transgression you transgressed. If you contravene the word of God, and you lead people, especially when you lead other people astray, the Bible says you'll be judged. Even the angels before the beginning of this particular creation, who sinned against God, God threw them into hell. And the Bible said, God, the Bible said, uh, in that place where we read, He said, and God did not spare the ancient world, the days of Noah. God did not spare all those ancient men of those days, writing from Seth, writing from Cain, all through to Noah. God did not spare anybody, except the righteous one like Enoch. They all perished in the flood. God preached and preached and preached and warned and warned and warned, but when men did not change, the consequences came. He didn't spare them. Hallelujah. Except for Noah, the eighth person, that is with seven others in the family. So eight people were saved in that flood. Noah won the word of God's righteous judgment. So God protected Noah when he destroyed the world of ungodly people with a vast flood. Later on, in the days of Lot, it was the same. God spared Lot. Now, what am I saying to you? I want you to note that this thing you are seeing, this COVID, is also part of judgment. I wonder why men are not looking up and saying, God, why? What, did, what are we not doing that we are? What are we doing that we should not be doing? Of course, uh, the world has gone that way. It was like in the days of Noah. But for you particularly, who want to be in the class of Noah, who escaped in those days, who want to escape today, friend, you must not be an unrighteous, you, not be, you must not be sensual, you must not be covetous. You must not be immoral. Immorality has become, sex and sexuality has become a very, very common thing nowadays. That even when people are walking on the mirror naked, nobody is concerned again. It must not be you. You must not take somebody's daughter. Everybody you take is either somebody's wife or somebody's daughter. You must not covet and be greedy. Be content. Righteousness exalts. If you are not a righteous man like Noah, you cannot preach righteousness. He told the people, that God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love. God is not unrighteous to forget you if you are a righteous man. He will never, never destroy the righteous and the wicked. But surely. So you must begin to preach. And the first way to preach and to serve God, if you are living well, is by living well. Live well in your office. Live well in your school. Live well in the company where you work. Live well in the market. Don't cheat your customers. Don't tell them lies. Don't be greedy. Don't do exam and practice. Live well. When you live well, you speak. Communication is not only by words. Your whole being communicates. You will discover that once you start preaching righteousness, you will draw a reaction from everybody else. But that is going to become your salvation because the Bible says, put on the shoes of the gospel. In these days in which we live, one of the things that is going to save you, one of the armor of God that is going to save you from destruction is when people see that you are putting on, on your feet, you are walking inside the shoes of the gospel. Your feet is bringing good news. And as you keep growing, God will now place you in a definite ministry. You can be a preacher, you can be a teacher, you can be an exhorter, but God will bring you into a definite ministry. But in the meantime, 
a man was captured by Jesus. And the Bible says, in a short time, he sat at the feet of Jesus, he was dressed, he was in the right mind, and, and he wanted to follow Jesus. Jesus said, no, 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 don't follow me. Go and tell people what has happened to you in the Decapolis. And that man made a tremendous, tremendous. Jesus can encounter you just one minute. Paul, the day Paul got born again, immediately after that, he began to think that Jesus is the Lord. Go and tell people your testimony. Go and live in, go and live what you believe. Go and live your life in God's, in, in, in before the people. That's what I want to charge you. That is one of the things that is going to save you in the massive attack that the enemy is going to launch on mankind. Get yourself ready. Wear the armor. Full armor. One of it is the gospel. Preach it. By your life. By your words. Give to the poor. Don't let a moment of opportunity pass you by. Do your utmost. Whatever you have, share. Practice and exercise your life. Be a godly man. Let God pass, pass through you as a channel. Say, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Don't think you are too small. You are not. As I pray with you again, please, if there is an internal work, if there is an impression, there is going to be an expression. If God is working in your life and you are getting a good testimony, then there must be an outlet of it. People will see it. If they don't see it, then there is no inner work being done in your heart. So I want to encourage you. Don't be timid. You have gifts. Ex exercise yourself. And we'll be coming back on this in subsequent... Because this, this discipleship is only a means to an end. If discipleship does not produce fruit, then there was no need for it. Be fruitful. Do like Noah. Challenge your generation. Condemn them by your ways and your words. And God will bless you abundantly. And save you from the wrath that is imminent by your head. Father, we thank you so much because your word is sure. It is forever settled. It will not return to you void. Lord, there are several, several, several of my brothers and my sisters hearing you this moment. I want to pray that you will stir their hearts. That they will not live a complacent lifestyle. That they will not live a lifestyle that is not true, but a contradiction. That they will stop sinning and go and do good. That many will be touched by their, by their gifts and their graces. Lord, confirm your word and cause that, Lord, in due time, very soon, the earth shall be covered with your glory and the fruit of these lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Reshes Media Center, number one, Refuge Close, on Gwambarde, Sabon Tashia Kaduna. Telephone numbers 0814-408-9412, 0805-845-5719. Email address threshesteam at yahoo.com or you could visit our website at www.threshesteam.org.ng.